Hi, this is Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. A uh, quick overview of the markets uh, as we kick off the week here, and before the opening bell, we have about 10 minutes till opening bell. Uh, looks like we're going to gap down. Uh, as expected, I, st I still think there's more downside on the queues. We've been testing, you know, la last week. Uh, all the way from Wednesday, you can see till Friday, we tested that 178.88 level like, a, I mean, we stuck to it like glue. And um, I still think it's, well, it is going to go now. We're indicated as I do, the, as I talk right now with the 10 minutes before the bell, we're trading at 169.15 on the queues, which, uh, as you can see, clearly puts us down below there. So there's the 169 level. So we're going to gap down. Uh, and we're also going to gap down and take out that gap in the queues. So it should be technically significant now. Uh, you know, back in the old days, you know, for years, buy the dip, buy the dip worked. And it may, you know, there's, you, you have to be patient. The first half hour of trading, uh, as well as the last, you know, half hour, 15 minutes, where you see most of the price action in the market, uh, very common to see some swift moves in the morning and late in the day. Uh, either way, those are levels to watch. If you want to, you know, be safe, you can wait for the first half hour, hour or so of trading um, to add to any short positions if you took them on the breakdown of the wedge or if you're looking for more downside. Uh, trend indicators, like I said, are ever so slightly uh, on Friday crossed bearish. My 1333 EMA histogram, this just shows you it's a custom histogram I created to give me a visual of when the 13 uh, period EMA crosses down above or below the 33 works as a good trend indicator I've talked about on the past in the past I'm sorry uh, and as well as that signal line on the 9 EMA the white line so both have crossed on Friday we'll have confirmation on today's gap down which to me reaffirms you know the the near-term bearish case uh, so barring any type of uh, you know big reversal today that gets us back up above 170.88 particularly in a 60-minute closing basis, gets these trend indicators back. I see more downside in the queues. Um, let's see. Same targets, you know, I was looking at. my At this point, my, uh, you know, minimum target is 166.88. That area, give or take, those are unadjusted targets. This is not an official trade idea yet, uh, or at this time, I should say. Uh, but because I'm looking for a quick pullback trade, and I think this pullback will be contained uh, maximum down to about the 163 level, at least before any significant bounce. So, you know, it's more of the same. Like I told you, expect this choppy sideways uh, action now that the volatility trade has been broken. You know, the days of the slow and steady grinds and buy every dip, you know, as shallow as it was and you'd be bailed out. Uh, I think for the foreseeable future, those are over. And uh, keep in mind, the uh, longer term charts are, sh are starting to, um, you know, really look... Uh, um, uh, increasingly bearish let's just leave it at that and I'll, I'll do a more extensive video later i just wanted to get this one out before the open so there it is uh so you know what to do how to trade it well if you would bounce back and he bounced back to 178.88 is certainly objective entry because that was um you know was not only the previous two highs here and then we gapped above it that third gap and you know that's technically reactions a gap above that really validated that as a, an important uh technical level it was support now it's broken so therefore that increases the strength if you say or the importance of that level so uh you know that's an objective entry well whether you short it there and it goes higher you get stopped out that's it's all trading you can that may 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 not happen. There's a little confluence of trading right there of trades that went on from Wednesday to Friday. So you could set a stop a little bit above that, and you're looking at a minimal downside if stopped out. Uh, and again, you might not even get that pushback to that level. I'm just showing you where objective levels are if you didn't short yet. So you're talking about one percent or so above the top of that 170.88 level. Uh, maybe we you know, reverse somewhere in the gap, but that would be my uppermost bounce target this morning. And uh, again, an objective area for active traders if you want to swing down um, hard to say which of those levels go but you could just trail your stops put a stop at break even if the trade starts to pay out play out uh, whatever you want um, and again you look at the daily charts and I think there's definitely room for a lot more this is a big divergent high and remember the snare I laid out all the way back here of the markets going on to make one new high. Well, the SPY never did it. The Dow didn't do it. No, those two are very related. They're, you know, your dividend stocks. However, the almighty QQQ, which has been the index throughout this entire bull market since the 2009 lows, it's got the beloved FANG stocks or FANGs, F-A-A-M-G, as I call them. 
uh, the market leaders, and that did put in that scenario. So there it is, guys. So the potential is there uh, to put on a, a swing short if you didn't do it already in trail stops down that has, uh, again, has the potential to even take out those lows, and that would be, you know, one of the best shorting ops in years. Um, might even exceed this shorting up here. So that's that. And if things change, I'll let you know. SPY currently, as I talk, uh, we, you know, we've recovered a little bit off the pre-market lows earlier this morning, but uh, we're indicated to open right now at 273.26, which means we took out the bottom of the gap. If you recall in last week's videos, I was talking about this gap right here as being technically significant, really in line with that, um, the, the, those previous highs and the breakout on on uh, QQQ. So there it is. And that's it. You can see just like we tested the top of that uh, that breakout level on QQQ last week, we backfilled and tested the bottom of that gap, which was support. And as I said, now we're indicated to open as, you know, as I talk here, 273.26. Obviously, that, that's going to change, but that puts us somewhere about right here, a little bit below that level. Uh, so objective shorting entries, if you trade the SPY, well, uh, the bottom of that gap uh, and or the top of the gap, um, that might might be an objective area. And there's still a, um, you know, my potential near term target is what I'm referring to it as 26990. Uh, whether we take that level out and had a lot lower or not, I think we'd get a reaction off there. So that's it. Those are near to the near term outlook. And uh, if anything changes, I'll uh, tr try to get an update out as soon as possible. Trend indicators, by the way, just to uh, confirm, I like to, as I often say, I like to see confirmation on, on both SPY and QQQ breaking down. And so we're going to have additional breakdowns. This was sell signal number one, the breakdown of those uh, trend lines that I talked about following the divergent high. And now today's gaps down below some pretty significant technical levels uh, on both SPY and QQQ, as well as the trend indicators further affirming a sell signal that was triggered on Friday puts the market and you know near-term outlook bias bias uh, for now this has been Randy Finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it and as always if you like the video please give it a thumbs up on YouTube